Welcome back to Common Ostrich Models. This week, I'll be showing y'all nine of my most helpful budget tools. None of these are necessary, but they've improved my workflow, are reasonably priced, and hopefully will help you too. Let's get into it. When I was starting out, I would just pour my paints onto a piece of printer paper and use that as a palette. They dried up really quickly and I wasted a lot of paint. A wet palette is a simple solution to that problem and can be made DIY very cheaply with items you might have on hand. You can find them for under 20 bucks commercially, but this DIY solution can be made out of basic kitchen supplies. I used a plastic container, some paper towel, and some parchment paper. I cut the papers to size, soak them in the sink, and then pat them dry. When I run out of room on the pallet, I just cut another sheet of parchment paper out and re-wet it. It's the easiest way to prevent paint from drying and has really leveled up my brush painting. Letting acrylics sit for long times causes some separation and it won't be as good as straight from the bottle, but if you're coming back to it a day or two later, it's normally fine with the wet pallet. This is really helpful when you mix up a custom color and need to use it again in a few hours. Q-tips and micro applicators are indispensable. These micro applicators are meant for makeup, but are super useful for modeling. You can use the brush end for precision work and then hang on to it for mixing up your paints. Shaking these Tamiya jars tends to leave crusty residue on the threads and makes them hard to open. The micro applicators offer much finer precision than a regular size Q-tip and the plastic stems last much longer than toothpicks. After I use the fuzzy end, I clip it off and hang on to that stem. It's an easy way to mount small parts for painting. Toothpicks work fine for this too, but I found they're more prone to snapping. The micro applicators are also great for cleaning out airbrushes. It makes it a lot easier to get into all the nooks and crannies. Pointed Q-tips are great for enamel washes as they provide more precision than regular Q-tips. These makeup Q-tips seem to be more tightly woven and less likely to fray and leave little strings and bits of cotton all over your model. I still keep cheap Q-tips around though for mounting road wheels like this. Plastic spoons are a surprisingly useful tool at the hobby table. Anytime I want to test a new technique or paint, I try it out on the spoon first. As I work on painting a model, I mirror whatever I'm painting onto a couple of spoons as if it were part of the model. That way, I can test and compare different washes, filters, chipping fluids, varnishes, or whatever before I put it on the actual model. Doing tests like this helps to lower the stakes of trying something new. Color tests are especially important when doing camo schemes because you won't see what the colors look like next to each other on the model until you remove the masks. I didn't test out the paints on this BTR and the contrast in the camo turned out to be much more subtle than I intended. When it comes to transparent parts, I just cut the plastic off of packaging. This was a piece of a peanut jar. Testing your paints before you put them on a model makes it infinitely less intimidating, which is especially important as a beginner. I also like to dab a little bit of paint on top of the paint cap of each bottle so I can quickly see what all the paints look like dried. This makes it a lot easier to pick out colors. Brush selection is super important. You don't need to spend a lot of money to get good brushes, but you should upgrade from the super inexpensive drugstore ones if that's what you're using. I started off using a pack of brushes that I got at the department store for like $5, and switching over to these $12 brushes made a noticeable difference. Using these brushes made precision work much easier, and I find their shape more comfortable for long-term use. The tips don't get frayed nearly as easily, and they feel like they hold the paint a lot better. Having a set of a few good precision brushes makes a world of a difference when it comes to detailing, but that doesn't mean cheap brushes don't have their place. I still keep the other brushes around, but I use them for enamels and weathering, so I don't damage my nice brushes. You don't want to have to clean sand or dirt or glue out of your nice brushes. The ones I've got aren't the nicest, but for a very small price bump, they're a huge improvement. Have you ever set your model down and come back a week later and forgotten where you were? Have you ever ran out of a mix of paint and forgotten what the ratios were? Have you ever come up with a brilliant technique and then let it slip from your brain a few hours later? That's where notes come into play. I keep notes for everything, and it's essentially a free tool that everyone can use. I just keep some printer paper and a pen on my desk, and anytime I mix up some paint that I know I'm going to need again, or try some technique that works out well, I write it down. 
I also like to write down the steps that I'll go through to complete a model and then work my way down the checklist. That way, if I catch some time after work to paint, I can stay on task and make the best of my time. If I come up with a particularly good idea or watch a video that has some good tips or I mix a really great color for a certain part, I transfer those physical notes to a document so I can quickly reference it again in the future. Adhesive putty, sometimes known by the brand names Blue Tack or Sticky Tack, is always part of my process. For camos, I use it as a mask to create organic curves easily. It's easy to use and I haven't noticed it peel up paint like masking tape does sometimes. It can leave bits behind, but they can be easily cleaned up with another ball of putty. If you're struggling to hang on to some finicky parts, you can easily use adhesive putty to attach mixing cups or paint jars to use as a handle. You can also use the putty to test fit stuff or hold stuff down onto your work table so you don't knock it over. This is a hard one for someone just entering the hobby and trying to work with a budget, but I think the airbrush is essential for how I paint, and this setup was less than $80. Buying an airbrush won't immediately make you a better painter, just like how getting a fast car doesn't make you a good driver. It's a tool that you have to learn how to use, and it's something I've really struggled with on my first few models. It took me three or four full models before I began to understand all the different variables that affect the airbrush, and learning how to balance all those variables is a continuous learning process. Once you do get it down though, it feels like mastering a manual transmission. You can achieve smooth gradients, use less paint, you get even layers, you can use stencils, you don't have to use toxic spray cans to prime, and base coating is way faster. It takes time and skill and lots of experimenting with paints, PSI, nozzle sizes, and tons of other variables, and even then, airbrushing isn't always the answer. It's hard to paint fine details without overspray, they can be finicky, and they can be expensive. If you like to brush paint your models and really hate the idea of airbrushing, stick with brush painting. But if you're on the fence about buying an airbrush, I'd 100% recommend it. The sooner you start to learn how to use an airbrush, the sooner you unlock the extra abilities that it provides. And having an airbrush doesn't mean you have to stop using regular brushes. It just gives you another tool for your toolkit. If your workstation isn't with an arm's length of a sink, these wash bottles are amazing. They make it super easy and quick to clean off paint brushes and clean out airbrushes when switching colors. I keep one bottle filled with water and the other with isopropyl alcohol. I use water to get the majority of the paint out of the cup, and then I use Q-tips and micro applicators to clean everything out best I can. Then I spray in some alcohol and I repeat the process. I give it a wipe down and then one final rinse with water and it's good to go. That's more than enough if you're just switching colors, but it's good to thoroughly clean your equipment when you finish a painting session. Breaking down an airbrush is easy, and these squeeze bottles ensure that you always have the necessary fluids at hand. Just be careful not to spray towards your model. I've had some close calls, and I've let alcohol drip onto a painted model on accident before. I'd advise that you cap off your alcohol bottle with a piece of adhesive putty. These bottles aren't just for airbrushing, though. If I ever need some alcohol to thin certain paints, or to clean off my tweezers, or to clean a brush off, I have it right there ready to go. They're super convenient, they're relatively cheap, it was less than $10 for a set of two, and the 90 degree angle on the straw makes them very ergonomic. My last tool is a little odd, but good lighting is super important, and not just for a studio setting. Maybe I'm just getting old, but I found that having good lights help me see all of the surface details of a model, and it ensures that I know exactly what my paint colors look like. It happened to me a couple times on my first few models where I didn't have enough light when I was painting, and when I moved the model into a different area of the room, the colors looked totally different. I used cheap clamp-on work lights that I got from the hardware store. They were less than $10 for a two-pack and have helped tremendously. Working in the dark is no fun. With all that said, work with what you have and don't feel pressured to buy anything you don't need. This is just a list of some of my personal favorite inexpensive tools. Hopefully you found some of these tools and tips helpful. Let me know your essential tools in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in and check back next week.